Welcome to the Emerging Temple broadcast. I am Michael Obeya. I will be your guide for the rest of this broadcast. At Emerging Temple, we seek to analyze current events within the context of God's plan for mankind, in which he intends, at the end of time, to raise up a people who will rule with him. Before I go any further, I want to encourage you to like our page, to subscribe to our channel, and if there is a notification bell icon, I would like you to hit that bell so you can be notified anytime we upload new videos. I want to encourage you to like this page so that we can develop the number of likes that we have so that we can come up in the rankings because we have a message that is critical for this hour and this time. So thank you so much for those of you who are already doing so. If you'd like to support our ministry, you can visit our website at templeoftruth.us. That's www.templeoftruth.us. Or you can go to patreon.com and look for our handle, Emerging Temple. All right. So let's go back to the book of Hebrews and let's discuss Hebrews a little bit more now, okay? The, the, by the way, any questions? I think that the one thing that you had pointed out in verse two before was where what it chapter, says- What chapter, what book, please? Um, chapter one, verse two. Of what book? Hebrews. Okay, good. Hebrews chapter one, verse two, where yeah. it says, Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, that I have in the notes here inside of you. Because when you were, when we did the study of the Greek. Yes. That, yes. Um, that he's spoken, he speaks to us inside of us. Yes, he speaks to us in his son. We, we mentioned that earlier today. Okay. Good, good. All right. So now, the idea of the book of Hebrews is to speak, is, is not just, even though it says to, to the Hebrews, right? Okay. It's not just to the Hebrews, like Dr. Dr. K mentioned earlier. It's to all peoples who had various cultures and traditions and taboos, etc., prior to the coming of God's Son, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if you were Indian, you had a particular taboo. If you were, um, if you were African, you had a particular taboo, whatever it was. You had certain taboos, certain things. And now, because of Jesus Christ, you're no longer subject to those things. Okay? So the book of Hebrews is now going to take the, the Hebrew people of the Old Testament as an example and begin to tell us that the rituals that they partake in, that participate in, were symbolic of a greater of a greater meaning that is only fulfilled in Jesus Christ okay and he says that listen angels were sent to enforce the laws of our former traditions but now god himself has sent his spirit to enforce it so anybody please can you read chapter 2 um verse 1 Tonight, anybody can read chapter two, verse one to nine. Amen. 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 Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? God also bearing witness, both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will, for he has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to angels, but one testified in a certain place saying, 
what is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man that you take care of him? You have made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we do not yet see all things put under him, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. Amen. Amen. So what we see here now is somebody, it says someone, okay? The apostle says, I don't know who, but someone somewhere said to God, Hey, sir, what is man that you put him only a little lower than Elohim? Now, I want you to understand that if God had put man a little lower than angels, would that person have been questioning God? No, because everybody assumes that, that exactly. people are lower than angels. Exactly. So this person that was asking God this question must have been asking God that, of all the great creatures you have, angels, cherubim, seraphs, they are different, you know. Mm -hmm. You now take this thing made of dust and put it in charge of all of us? How many of you know that in the Kabbalah mystery of Judaism and in Islam and other religions, they believe that Satan became Satan when he refused to bow to man. How many of you know that? No. Okay. And there are many Christians who actually believe that. The reason I don't go with it, even though I like the story, is because the Bible doesn't say any such thing. Okay? But it's telling. Because this is where they got that concept from. That one of the angels called Shaitan said, I cannot bow to this thing. I look at myself and I will prove to you, great God, that this thing that you have made and told us to worship is not worthy of worship. And that that's why he keeps testing man and tormenting man and all that. And God has said to him, you will see that this dust that I have made is worthy of worship. Okay? Now, if we if we go back to yes, chapter sir, go one, go if we go back to chapter one, verse four, yes, that um, he says, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. There, when they say name, they mean nature. There you go. Thank you very much. Perfect. Okay, so. Man, this, this, this man we're talking about here is man. Are you listening now? It's not just Jesus. It's man. It says, what is man that you are mindful of him? That means what is Liz? Even today, Liz herself is joining that guy and asking the same question. Who am I? I have a headache. I have this. My toe hurts. Oh, I can't even move. My car is broken down. Oh. Who am I? Who is me? That's what, that's the problem. God is trying to tell you who you are and you are saying, God, <laughs> I don't think you've got the right girl. <laughs> Try next door. <laughs> You're definitely not talking about me. And that's what's going on in Hebrews here. The whole chapter one through three, or sorry, chapter one and two is all about that. It's all about trying to tell you that in time past, yes, your ancestors didn't have the cognitive ability to know who they really were. So God had to communicate with, to them through angels. But now, because Jesus has come, you can rightfully take your place as just a little lower than Elohim. Amen. Amen. Your ancestors Amen. were entitled to it, but God is saying they can be forgiven because Jesus hadn't come. So there was no way that they could know. But he's saying for you, there's no excuse. Okay, now somebody please read from verse 10 down to 18, chapter 2. 
Liz, can you do that for us? Um, 10 to, oh, in chapter, in chapter two? two, verse 10 to 18. Amen. 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 Indeed, it is a, it was fitting that when bringing many sons to glory, God for whom and through whom all things exist should make their leader in the work of salvation perfect through suffering. He who consecrates and those who are consecrated have one and the same father. Therefore, he is not ashamed to call them brothers. Stop. Saying, Do you see that? Yes. Liz and Jesus have the same father. So Jesus is not ashamed to call Liz my sister. Now, I want that to get into your everybody's head. Let's take the next two or three years and stop for a second. We'll be back in three years while it sinks in. Okay. Now, three years is over. I'm hopeful that has sunk in. <laughs> this here is what God is trying to say that listen you are actually the sister of Jesus Christ he's your big brother you know like brother all right let's continue please I will announce your name to my verse brother 11. I will okay verse, sorry verse 12 sorry go ahead you're right Yes, I will. I will announce your name to my brothers. I will say. I will sing your praise in the midst of the assembly. I will put my trust in him. And again, here, here am I. The children of God have given me. No, no. Read that again, please. And the children God has given me. Yes. Here I am, and the children God has given me. Now, since the children are men of blood and flesh, Jesus likewise had a full share in ours, but that by his death he might rob the devil, the prince of death, of his power, and free those who had, through fear of death, been slaves of their whole life, through, slaves through their whole life long. Surely he did not come to help angels, but rather the children of Abraham. So, Therefore, he had to. Let's 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 break that down a little bit. What was the reason the children were not functioning in their full capacity? Because of their fear of death. Oh, oh man, I feel so good. You know, we could end this fellowship right now because that's it. We got it. Because of our fear how did fear first come to mankind can anybody tell me it's from the when first they ate the apple when they ate the apple they were afraid did god come storming and they heard god screaming from like 10 miles away i'm gonna kill you no he just came no. he really came they on their own were scared when nobody had ever screamed at them or even harassed them. And God even said, have you done what I told you not to do? So the fear of God in us is irrational. Can I say that again? The fear of God in us is irrational because that is the power of the devil yeah i think what you had said once before was that the fear of death that death is actually separation from god yes of course but the fear is the key thing we're concentrating on here now every one of us has to some degree, a level of fear. How, I mean, how many times have you been in your room, maybe uh, somewhere 
or outside and a lizard or a, a mice or something just scribbles right underneath your feet. You go, ah, what's that, right? Mm -hmm. do, you yeah. think Jesus, do you think Jesus would do that? No. He was always cool, right? He was in, in a boat. It's rocking. Everybody's scared and he's asleep. What does that tell you? He had no what? He was no fear. He had no fear. How many people sing that song? Because I know he holds my future. Right? So yes. In that song, we say, I have no fear. All fear is gone. Remember? Is all fear really gone? I know I, have, I still have fear. Every one of us here still has fear. Amen? Amen. 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 So your growth as a Christian is equivalent to the decrease of fear that you have for anything. It's just fear. Okay? Fear must decrease. Whether it's fear that you will die from AIDS, malaria, car accident, fear that you can't pay your mortgage, fear that you cannot pay, make your car payments, fear that your husband might leave you, your wife might leave you, fear that your child, whatever, there ought to be no fear. Now, how do we cast out fear, everybody? By faith. Does everybody remember we, were, we studied the book of 1 John a few days, a few weeks ago, or last week? What did it tell us about how to cast out fear? Perfect love cast out what? Yeah. Fear. Yeah. And remember we said the fruit of love is what? Patience, forgiveness, long-suffering, etc., right? Yes. yes. The fruit of the Spirit. Sorry, you said the fruit of the Spirit is love. And from love you get all these things. Long-suffering, patience, forgiveness, etc. So as we practice these things, we destroy fear in our lives. You see how the Bible study is building on, everything is built on each other? Yes. All right. Sorry yeah, for it seems, you. It seems so. I, I guess the question is, all those things, what does that have to do with overcoming fear of spiders or overcoming fear of mice or anything? Because it's not the mice or the spiders or the condition that's the problem. The problem is the nature that has fear. Now, if I, I don't know about you, if I was in a ship and it was rocking the way the Bible described, I'd be afraid. Talk less of being in a canoe or something. See, it, it, the issue is fear. Do you understand? When you, when you and I express fear, we didn't know it was a lizard. We didn't know what it was. All we know is that we were startled. Right? Right. We don't know. I mean, for all we know, it was an earthquake. It was this. It was a snake. Was, we don't know what it was. All we know is we still have fear. And fear is supposed to recede. And for it to recede, we must have the weapon called love. That's what we studied in the book of 1 John. It said in 1 John, perfect love casts out fear. And then um, in Corinthians 13, 1 Corinthians 13, Paul told us what the fruit of love is, the fruit of the Spirit is. Okay? He said the fruit of the Spirit is love, right? And then he gave us all those other things, long-suffering, blah, 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 all these things, peace, um, patience, forgiveness, all these things. Now, if we practice these things, then fear begins to leave us. 
if we do not practice these things, fear remains with us. So um, how do you break this down for someone, a younger person who has fear for, you know, like someone like Tavo that has nightmares and fears about, you know, the current world, strange things happening in the world today that he's not used to. And he's said to me that he's had to kill himself in his sleep just so that he can wake up, which is quite strange. Well, that, first of all, first of all, for ch first of all, it's not good to, for me as an individual to begin to give advice on any particular. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. As a so, parent, this is a, this we, is a question. as a parent, I'm responsible for my child's welfare. So. If my child is playing video games, for example, I'm just, I'm not saying, I'm not knocking video games. I'm just putting that out as an example on YouTube, on their computer or whatever. And they're cutting off people's heads in the video games and cutting off their fingers. I would expect my child to be a little bit disturbed by those things. Okay. So, so he's listening for me to myself you also, know? sorry, for can myself I, can I just also, can I just oh, make ahead, a comment? Ahead, because sorry, he, ahead, he's listening to the conversation about fear. Yes. And he's, this is a question he's asked me, and that's why I relate that to you. Sure, because, sure, sure. Because he has fear for transgender people. And yeah. ever since that conversation was had, he, he sees it in his dreams. And now he says every time he sees it in his dreams, he has to kill himself in his dreams so that he can wake up. Now, and it's a very strange, it's a very strange phenomenon, you know, but this is what he says. And while you were talking about fear, he's looked at me to ask to, to ask me that question. So I'm asking okay. if All right. can, so let's look if at, let's go back. can let's, break it let's down go back for you to understand. Sure, sure. Um, let's go back to yeah. first John. Let's go back to first John. Amen. 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 Okay, let's look for where it says um. Perfect love casts out fear. I think that's First John chapter four, verse eighteen. No problem. No problem. Verse seventeen and eighteen. Okay. Make sure you highlight this. Okay. Because it doesn't matter what kind of fear it is. Remember, we said that. There's no need for us to particularize one kind. It doesn't matter what kind. Could be, oh, look, look, look there's, a, there's a spider. <laughs> okay? It doesn't matter what kind it is. We ought not to have it. Now, all of us do have it. But it's supposed to be receding. Okay? First John chapter. Chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. Amen. Is somebody going to read? Sure, go ahead. Uh, anybody. Herein is Amen. our love. Okay, go ahead, Liz. Our love is brought to perfection in this, that we should have confidence in the day of judgment. For our relation to this world is just like this. Love has no room for fear. Rather, perfect love can cast out all fear. And since fear has to do with punishment, love is not yet perfect in one who is afraid. Do you see that? Now, please read it. In, somebody else read it in a different translation. Okay. Um, can we start with verse 15, Brother Mike? Because sure, sure, I think it sure, puts it into sure. context. Sure, go ahead. Amen. 
whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Amen. Okay. Amen. Now, every one of us has a little fear, and Tabo must understand that. Everybody has fear. Now, to overcome fear does not, make, does not require you going to, quote, confront your fears, like they say in the world. It requires you getting to know God better and practicing the one thing, the only thing that Jesus commanded us to do. Jesus said, I'm giving you all only one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's all. Remember that. He says, no other commandment do I give you, but love. Love thy brother as thyself. So now, look at Galatians chapter 5. Galatians. Remember, everybody, we studied Galatians the other day. Chapter 5, verse 22 and Isabella, you got that? Please read it. Amen. 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 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such there is no law. Amen. Those... Yeah. yeah, that's, that's the thing. That was just 23. Uh, 22 and 23. Mm -hmm. So if you remember, we studied these a few weeks ago. Okay. Okay. And here we're seeing Paul says, love. That was the first one he mentioned. He said, this is a fruit of the spirit. Okay. These are things that God expects to become fruitful in our lives, to be expressed in our lives. Long suffering. Long suffering doesn't mean to suffer for a long time. Okay. It just means to be able to put up with things, <laughs> right? You understand know what I'm saying? Yes. So let's take, yes. for example, you're in school and there's a school bully. Well, what you don't know about that school bully is that his father is always beating up his mother at home. And when he tries to step in, his father beats him up. And he can't, he wants to fight somebody and there's nobody for him to fight. So he goes to school and he bullies all the kids in school. You and I don't know that. We just think he's a bully. And we hate that person. But that person needs our prayers. That person needs our help. We never know of these things. Things happen. Do you understand? Yeah. So there's so many things. Yeah. Video games. Some video games are not for you. You don't need your mother and father to tell you this is a bad video game. You read in the Bible in 1 John where it says you do not need anyone to teach you because the spirit of God in you teaches you all things. So you're playing a video game and they're chopping off heads and fingers and knees. Well, guess what? It's like, oh, once you see that, you're like, man, I need to turn this off. Why? Because those images play again in your mind, in your dream. Same thing of movies. Movies, of course. the news, anything. But and I this think... goes for us who are adults. You know, I when you see those things that say uh, for adults, look, let me tell you something. If they tell you something is not for children, it's not for you. I don't care if you're a hundred years old. 
It's not for you. That's just a fact. We should we should even be fortunate and thankful that God has given us this insight to allow us to even watch some movies. In time past, He put us in such a cage we didn't even watch any movies. <laughs> to train you, okay? That is a, he made us. He made us believe that that's the world, yeah. And we didn't play any music, any worldly music, any worldly movies. Only thing we played had to be singing Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Okay. Any movie you watch had to be about you know the good news of Jesus. Now we've taken it to an extreme. We say we're adults and we watch all sexually explicit movies. Say we're, we because we're adults. No. No. Okay. Sorry, Kay, you were going to say something. Sorry to interrupt. When you took us to First John, the reason why I wanted to start at verse fourteen is because a lot of a lot of our fear comes from what's in our mind, and yeah. that when you realize that we're not subject to the torment, if we're if we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, and we are um, we have determined to follow him, then we're not subject to, to the um, punishment of the angels or the, the, the second death. And, yeah. so, and then it, God is in us. If God created everything, then what is there to fear? There, there's nothing to fear. So we're still going to have that fear. But when that fear comes over you, if you can just take a deep breath and just look at it in your mind and say, wait a minute, what am I looking at here? What am I thinking? You know? Okay. I now know remember, that. Remember what we said. The fear leaving us is not our job. It's not our responsibility. Our responsibility is to do what we just read in Galatians. And the fear will go on its own. Amen. Amen. But but I can, I I understand I understand what you're saying. However, yeah. however, that there's two things at work here. Yes, you're going to be practicing these. You're going to be um, these things are going to happen. That you're going to be loving. You're going to have joy. You're going to have peace. You're going to have long suffering. You're going to have gentleness. But no, what's going to happen? Exercise. Sorry, I'm you're sorry. Gonna, Sorry, you, you're, you're going to exercise. Sorry, you're going to exercise these things. You're going to exercise these yeah. things, but you're going to go through a bunch of tests. That how you how you overcome those tests, you're going to develop those skills through those tests. So when you're in the middle of a test, where that test may be something that you're afraid of, that in, in standing in the middle of the test. Jesus says, fear not, for I have redeemed you, and I have called you by name, and you are mine. So we have to bring things, when we're in the middle of a test, whether that test be fear or anything else, to me, we have to look at, we have to remember, whose child are we? I think, to, to be honest, um, in the world we live in right now, I think it's very hard to interpret these things from the way we would have when we were in this bubble that you described, Brother, Brother Mike, where we didn't know, we don't see, you know, we hear the, you might hear these things happening in a distance, but you don't get to see them. Now, the world we live in right now is a kind of world where I go to my WhatsApp to delete some videos and clear, to, to clear my memory. And someone has shared a video of someone being butchered somewhere, and I'm seeing so much blood everywhere. And before I even have a chance to leave that page, it's already in my head. I'm seeing, I'm seeing so much evil, so much, so much, you know, it, it, it can't even explain it. There was one, one day where I just became hysterical when I saw someone slowly being cut to pieces. Like, it's happening. So, so while they were cut into pieces, we, were you tied there? But that's what I'm saying. Before I even have a chance to leave it. So maybe, <laughs> but that's, this is what I'm saying. It doesn't take, you don't need two seconds 
you've already your your eyes have already seen it and before i'm trying to switch quickly remove my eyes from there i've just seen someone who has been caught and seen blood everywhere i've seen body parts <laughs> is it's it's it honestly I, I remember i called you one of those days and i was you know we had to pray about it for the image to go out of my head for two weeks <laughs> um, now on a serious note now what i do is i look i'm looking away while i'm pressing on the on the message just just in case <laughs> just in case if it's something disturbing and i hear a disturbing sound i'm deleting it before i even look it's ridiculous but this is exactly the world we live in you have that you have that in your face, your social media. I don't have to even watch a movie to see. And okay. Okay. So, so things, look, things, that, things I never okay, need. Let's, let's, sorry. Let's, that, this is what, so sorry. This is sorry to interrupt. Have to, sorry. These sorry, are to interrupt. Have to think. sorry. Sorry to interrupt. We, the, the reason, the reason you see me always going to the scriptures is that I also have opinions. Amen. Mm -hmm. But Amen. we're not here for my opinion. We're here to find out what the word says. Do you get it? So. Well, that's what I'm saying. The I word doesn't help that, me in the way I'm thinking. That's what I'm no, saying. No, that no, word, no, I'm not disagreeing I've read it, but it doesn't help my thinking. No, I'm not disagreeing with right anything you said. Trust me, I, I, I get it. That was why when we first started, I said, let's look at the word. Do you understand? I can tell you, like I said, oh, don't watch these movies, don't do this, don't do that. That's an opinion. And notice there was a counter to my opinion. You see that? And which is justified. So, so let's give the young people, the older people, let's give people the word of God. What does God say about a, a situation? Well, now, I think, I think, sorry, I'm not done. Okay. So now we've read in the word where it says perfect love casts out fear. So the next thing is what is love? We did a study on that before. You get it? So I would, if you all don't mind, I'm going to like, I would like us to finish chapter four. Once we finish chapter four, then we can come back to this conversation, which is, which is good. But that way, at least we know we, you know, we did what we set out to do today. Is that okay? Yeah. It's a, it's yeah. Okay, okay um, Brother Mike, I know you want to go back to chapter four, but in Galatians chapter five, where we are, there's yeah. something said here, verses 16 and 17. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. You can actually read it to verse 20. Okay. Amen. Amen. This I, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I think that the answer to all of this is verse 16. Thus I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's why I was saying, if we remember whose child we are, which is where we started back in Hebrews and walk in that, then we'll be able to overcome fear just like we overcome everything else. And we'll be able to, when we're walking in the spirit, we're going to exhibit the fruits of the spirit. All right. Okay. So, 
Can we look at Hebrews 4 now? Yes. All right, thanks. All right, so the, the first part we looked at is a comparison between what was said in time past to the elders, to the forefathers, through the prophets and through angels, etc. And then we read that, listen, be careful because when those people disobeyed what they received, God sent angels to punish them. We will be in worse trouble if we do not take heed to what God is saying through his son. Those other people got God's word through prophets and things were bad for them. He's like, hey, be careful. Things will be worse for you if you don't take heed to what God says to you through his son. So that's what we got in chapter three. Now in chapter four, it says, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us. So I'm sorry, chapter four, verse one. Okay, can I read? Yes. Yeah. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should be seen to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, that's our forefathers, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into what? Rest, as he said, as I have spoken and sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. So he's saying here, we who have what? Verse three, believed. Amen? Yes. We who have believed have entered into the rest. Okay. Now, if you look at verse eight, I'm going to skip down to verse eight real quick. Do you notice it says, for if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? Do you see that, Abele? Yes. Doesn't that sound contradictory to what we saw in verse three? Mm -hmm. How would you explain that, anybody? Here, the Jesus they're talking to about is not Jesus Christ. It's talking about Joshua. Very good. The word Jesus is Joshua. Did everybody here know that before? Yes. Good. So your Bible is translated from the Greek to English. And the Greeks, in when people want to say J Joshua in Greek, okay, you know, in the Hebrew, they had no J. So it was Yeshua, right? So the Greek said Jesus. And when you write that in English, it comes out as G-E-S-U-S. -S. But the Joshua is talking about here, or the Jesus in verse 8 is talking about here is Joshua, who took the children of Israel, who took the fathers into the promised land after Moses died. But because of the way we're translating from Hebrew to Greek, from Greek to English, we put Jesus here. Amen? Amen. Okay. Amen. So, so that rest that he's talking about is the rest that you and I have received in Christ. Okay? Okay. Um, look at verse 14 to 16. Anybody can read that. We haven't heard from Mom Logan. Is she with us still? No, I think she's listening. She has a microphone mute, so there must be something going on. Go ahead. Okay. Anybody read, please, verse 14 to 16. See Amen. Them. Okay. Yeah, go, go ahead. On. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our professions of faith, for we do not have for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who is tempted in every way that we are, yet never sinned. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and favor and to find help in time of need. Amen. Amen. So here is the simple thing. He says, look, Jesus understands that 
we have fears, we have weaknesses, we're, we're not perfect yet. He said, let us now come to him with confidence to ask for help concerning any need, any lack that we have. That is what we're trying to communicate. Amen? Amen. We're trying to say there is no, if, if we sit now and try to give advice, I might give advice from my mind that works for Liz, but it doesn't work for a belly. Amen? Yes. But if I Amen. give Liz and a belly a word from the scripture, the, that same word will minister to Liz in one way and minister to a belly in a different way. Because the word of God is what? Look at, look at what he says in verse 12, chapter 4, verse 12. What does it say? A belly, can you read that for powerful. me? Oh, Mom Logan is here. All I've right. been here. I've been here. No, I know. I know. I, I, I told them. They were wondering where you were. I, I have so you, many things I want to say. I decided to just keep quiet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Emily, can you read for us verse 12 and 13? For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and in a discern and in a discern yes, yes. discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart and there is no creature hidden from his sight but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account thank you so the word of god is quick is sharp and powerful more powerful than a two-edged sword. And it's able to separate your soul from every tormenting spirit. Amen. Amen. So, Brother Mike will say to you, let's look at this scripture. Let's look at that scripture. Let's look at this scripture. Why? It's not that he doesn't have his own opinion. Amen. Amen. Is Amen. that he's thinking... If I deliver this word to her, this word is related to the thing she's saying. And I have put her in the hands of Jesus because Jesus is the word of God. Amen. And all of us must practice that. Amen. We Amen. must practice that. Amen. We must, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing, dividing the word of truth. This is what we, that is why we started the book of Hebrews. We've done the first four chapters. Already you can see that the word of God is opening up things for you and I. Okay? Be separate from the old. In the old, you went to the priest and you made your confession on Thursday evening, etc. And it says, do 10 Hail Marys, etc. Okay? Now, 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 now you come. They say, no, go to Jesus. Amen. Now that you come, they say, go Amen. to Jesus. Go to Jesus. Go to Jesus. Whatever the problem is, take it to him. Because whatever opinion a person gives you, there'll be a counter opinion to that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Whatever Amen. advice, somebody says, well, I want to advise you based on my experience. My experience is not your experience. Right. True. I, I think here in chapter four, verse three, yes. it's very important. He says, for we which have believed, that which have believed do enter into rest. Have believed what? that we enter into the rest through our belief. And I think that's, that's why I took us in Galatians, when we were in Galatians, to where it says, walk in the spirit, and said that we have to, be, we have to believe and really digest it. What does it mean to be a, you know, to be Jesus' little sister or little brother? What does that mean? Really, that when you start to accept these things and put these things into action, really digest it in your spirit, then it becomes easier to overcome all kinds of things. But when it's a concept that really doesn't, hasn't sunk in, then really have we believed it? I don't know. What do you think? I think Romans chapter 10, verse 17 summarizes what you just said. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to it. Okay. Romans what? Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Okay. Almost there. Amen. 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 Anybody can read. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. Did you get that? Amen. Yes. Did he say faith cometh by yes. hearing the word of God? Hearing and hearing. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Did you get that? Yes. Yeah. So faith coming by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing, Brother Mike? No, the word of God. Oh, no, no, no. Faith, the word of God. Hearing and hearing and hearing, Sister Liz. No, the word of God. The word of God. So just Sunday morning is not enough. You've got to be in the word of God every day. Amen. 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 And we read in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, that the word of God is sharper than what? Two-edged sword. Doing what? When it, what? What does it cut? What does it separate? Dividing the truth. Dividing the soul from yes. spirits. Yes. Why? Because there are different kinds of spirits that won't attach themselves to your soul. Amen. 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 And they bring fear. They bring harassment. But when you have the word of God, the word of God comes in. If the young man, Tabo, can hear me, Tabo, you need to get into the word of God. It has a power to separate your soul from anything trying to torment you. The word of God. You've got to listen to it on your headphone when you're going to school. Play it on, on your, put on your, 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 your head, earphones and be listening to the word of God. And you'll be surprised what will happen. You'll see yourself in your dreams turning into giants. You, you listen, you, don't, don't take my word for these things. Try it. Just try it. Yeah, it's Even when you, uh, uh, Mommy Bella, when you, when you see videos that are uh, uh, horrible or whatever, because of the amount of word content in you, they will not even bother you. Do you understand? I'm not saying you should stay and be looking at them. <laughs> okay? I'm saying, yeah, like you said, you just sometimes you just flip a channel and boom, it's right in front of you. You can't get that picture out of your mind. No problem. But the word of God that is in you, being sharper than any two-edged sword, will separate you, that is the soul, from the spirit that that image wants to use, to, that, that, that spirit wants to use that image to impose itself on your soul. Mm. That's why we go to the word, go to the word. It's not that Brother Mike wants to, you know, silence anybody. It's not that. It's like we're here because we've been to all these other, you know, motivational places and discovered that, you know what? Nothing works like the word of God. Nothing like Pablum. Mm -hmm. this nothing, like, nothing like the word of God. When your kid comes and says, Mom, I got a problem. I say, okay, let's go into the word and find out what the word is all about. Send... Well, that's why we have the WhatsApp group. You can go, go to the WhatsApp group, ask a question. And when people respond in the WhatsApp group, let's back up what we say with the word. Amen? Amen. Because everybody, I mean, it's okay for us to have dialogue over anything. I mean, we could discuss, you know, whether we should have a new Supreme Court justice. and I mean, we could do that, but we know we're having fun. We, we're not going to take it personal because we know it has nothing to do with the word. Amen? Amen. Amen. But once Amen. we know the word... I could say something to the word and say, but Brother Mike, the word says such and such. Then I got to now be able to justify why this says that. And it's, it's, it's the word of God that is, you know, that's there. So let's all, you know, and I can see how everybody's participating now. Such a far different from when we first started. When we have to say, Sister Liz, are you there? Yes. <laughs> Bill, are you there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Now, now it's like, whoa, pull the horses back, pull them back. <laughs> I think uh, well, what Brother you Mike, were saying is... Yes, Mom. Uh, I, I kept quiet because I was praying. Amen. My heart goes out to the youngest member of this class. Yes. I wish I had him in my presence. 
so I can help him know what love is. The reason I adopted three special needs children that had been bombarded by the world, they didn't like me for it. My own children didn't like me for it. But I let them know that their home was a refuge of where God is the center. And everything that happened was dealt with by the word. And even every song was by the word. And I hear my son preaching now that he says, I can't even listen to that. Yeah. Because it gets in my psyche and the day we're living in right now is different than what it was two years ago yeah yeah and Amen. our youngsters are being bombarded with artificial intelligence mm. everything is coming from satan and if they don't know when they're troubled to turn it off and go to a quiet place and let the love of God come in. The enemy is trying to destroy us through our youngsters. Yes. They've tried it for years. Instead of us being in fear, grab that child, hold it tight, pray the strongest, deepest, earnest prayer you can. And then go into your closet and ask the Lord to feed you, fill you up so that it emanates from you automatically. Okay. And this is what I was blessed with from a grandmother who was Methodist. Didn't matter. But when times got bad, she sang only gospel songs. And she'd grab you by the hand and dance around with you. And she said, be happy. Sing it with me. Yes. And see, we are not getting this when we're not in Bible study. And we're getting all this other stuff. And if we're truthful, it's affecting our dreams too. Yes. And I get up in the middle of the night and I hit my knees. Because I think I've been wakened because those I love are being tormented. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We cannot do anything by ourselves. No psychologist, no psychiatrist. We have to know this word. And then we have to grab our children and hold on to them tightly and just love them. And tell them about the perfect love. Hath no man than this. Amen. That's Amen. all I'm going to say. And that's why I kept quiet. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, God. Brother Mike, when you were talking about reading the, you know, listening to the scripture, I wanted to point out that there's a Bible app that is put out by YouVersion Bible, that if you put that on your phone and you've got headphones, that when you, you can go to any book in the Bible and push, you know, push play, and it will read yes. to you that book. Yes. So, yes. so um, if, and they have um, different topics in there that you can find, you know, you can look Google on your phone and find a topic like the love of God or yes. anything and then find a scripture or you can decide to start with a particular book aside from what we're reading as a group and just study it. I know before school every day, mom would sit, down with us before we cut that school bus and we would read scripture together and sing hymns and then go to and pray and then go to school but even i mean kids can be so mean on the school bus and everything that um wherever you are just putting it on even even listening to it through your car stereo on your car if you're an adult driving just put on the U version bible on your phone connect to your Bluetooth and you can listen right in your car and it's free. You know, music is uh, something that soothes my soul. So while you're shopping around and looking to see what's available, look for 
sound bites, and so So I solicit your prayers. I solicit your support. Okay, I want to thank you for your time. For those of you who have been faithful, you know, uh, supporting this work, for being involved, sharing these videos. Okay, don't be, don't, don't, don't get weary. Don't be weary. Don't get tired. Your strength is supposed to come brighter and brighter every day. Okay, keep pressing on. Share these videos with your family and friends. Start watch parties on Facebook. Go over these videos so your friends and family can discuss it. Okay, and continue to write us. Write me through Facebook. Write me through. You know, the, the comment section here on YouTube. Okay? So I want to encourage you. Thank you so much for the way you've been supporting us. Thank you so much for all that you've been doing. We really appreciate it. Remember what I said, if you want to continue listening to us, you can audio, you can always go, okay, to our website. You can see the online menu channels that you can get us through. Like I mentioned um, Apple's iTunes. I met Apple iTunes. I mentioned um, Spotify and I think Google. You can also, you know, there are other platforms also through which you can hear us through audio, okay? I want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel and to, you know, hit the like buttons, hit the like buttons. I can't say that enough. Every time you watch these videos through YouTube, hit the like buttons. Now, if you're watching through Facebook or you're watching through some of the videos like WhatsApp, it's not going to show here, so you won't see a like. But if you're watching through YouTube, I want to encourage you. Or Facebook, wherever it is, I want to encourage you, hit that like button. Okay, hit that like button. It matters to us. Okay, thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for everything that you've been doing, you know, by watching our videos. 